All right, so let's talk about the World's End show. Uh, you, you've you written, you wrote about it and said, you know, it's going to have really good matches, but they don't have like that that killer lineup that they usually have. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm after the last main event, I'm kind of going into this show not really looking forward to the main event where if it was just a straight up singles match without a crazy angle expected Samoa Joe and MJF on pay-per-view sounds awesome, but they, they, they had a great match on TV. Yeah. But, and this would be better because they, it's, they have more time and no match. commercial breaks. Yeah. 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 But, but Ma- 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 the devil Max, thing, I Max, is, Max is hurting though. They had the devil thing, you know, I mean, but that, you know, that could also be just the finish. The match itself, they may not. You know, if they have a whole bunch of mass dudes constantly interfering in the match, you know, like it's a house of torture, that would totally suck. But I don't know that that's what's going to happen. I sure yeah, I think not. it's just the idea that something is, we expect something to happen is kind of what, what it would. Uh, and it's not even that I have an issue with it. That's business. They're, they, well, they've I mean, been doing this entire angle. I'm just thinking of from like a usual... AEW main event pay per view style match. There's yeah, but you can do that. You can do that match and then do something after the match. That's not a, and that's not a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about Kingston and Moxley? They're gonna have a great match. So you know, um, I expect Kingston to win, but who knows? But um, I, um, you know, Kingston's been a big star in the tournament. I thought the tournament was a big success. Um, a lot of great matches. Danielson um, and Kingston was awesome. Yeah, I thought it was the best match of the tournament so far. Um, in these, you know, the finals. You know, one of the things in the finals though is that you, you almost have to have. The, you know what I mean? It's like it's almost a letdown if the final isn't the climactic best match. So they have to kind of equal or top that match, and that match was was mm-hmm. good. Yeah, hard to you know beat a Brian Danielson match. That's true. Yeah. By the way, I didn't see you write anything about this but do you do you have any leanings anywhere on on who the devil on who the unveiling might be i still i still think it's adam cole but that's just who i thought it was yeah you know, I, beginning. you know it could be adam cole um jack perry um you know who knows um samoa you know i guess it can't be samoa joe and and, and i don't think it's max anymore so i don't know um all, you know, I mean, I don't know that anyone that that's like debuting from you know from WWE would be the right guy. You know, like Dolph Ziggler, who's now a free agent, and they can bring him in. You know, um, you know, Christian Cage, I suppose, could be you know fitting in with his character. Um, it's a hard one. I mean, there's a lot of different people it could be though. And you still believe uh, Adam Cole is is pretty injured as far as he's hurt i mean yeah. like you know his rehab um is uh i guess frustrating you know because it's taking time yeah i guess that's the best way to put it it's taking time it was going to take time he had two surgeries so you know it's uh it's a tough deal all right let's go through the rest of this card uh tony storm and Riho for the uh aw women's world championship any expectations for this one it's a tough one because, like, if it was just a straight match, it would probably be really, really good. But there's so much character work involved that could, you know, kind of make it, you know, it's like, okay, for a television match, but kind of on a pay-per-view could be a, a negative. So we'll have to see how it works. I mean, Rio's matches always get over. So I think it'll be good. Uh, Christian Cage and Adam Copeland. This match is sort of like an afterthought now on this show. Interestingly, uh, they they have to do a good finish in some way. I mean, they've got a storyline that they've been working on, and I, I think Adam Copeland probably wins. Um, but the no DQ makes no sense because you know the first match wasn't a DQ. But um, you know they're really smart guys when it comes to bell to bell, like really smart. So they will have a very smartly done professional wrestling match and um you know where it goes you know um we'll see but um i mean i i expect like i expect a very smartly done match and a really good match yeah and julia hart versus abaddon for the uh tbs championship is abaddon in this role simply because they've beaten all the other women that they want to beat and there's other women that they don't want to beat and i think so 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't like. I don't know. The match doesn't really interest me. I'll just say that. I mean, Abaddon, um, not around that much. Never really, uh, you know, interesting gimmick, but doesn't do anything for me. Um, you know, Julia Hart obviously has kind of gotten to be a star, but um, yeah, the match doesn't interest me. I'll just say that. And a match that was oddly just announced, uh, what, yesterday morning, the All-Star 8-Man Tag. So that was announced. The- wasn't that announced like last night? Or was it? Was it? It was later because because Tony did a press conference in the afternoon and never mentioned it, which was really surprising because he said he had like all this news and then said he had all this news that he was going to talk about at the at the press thing. And then I don't really think he like, you know, he answered questions, but I don't think he really gave any great news you know mm-hmm. and this would have been a great time to announce it and then hours later you know he announced this this, this eight man tag you know that'd be good work rate eight man tag match um i don't know what it means i mean the the, the 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 thing about this match is is that in theory you should shoot a bunch of angles out of it to for these guys to go to the next direction where where they're going because uh you know you should that's what this should be is is you know teasing multiple things and then going and in several different directions, you know, for, for Danielson and Roosh and everybody in the match, really. And how did he split it up? He didn't split it up blue versus gold, right? No, I think he just split it up based on um, probably directions that he's going and uh, um, just trying to have a good, ma- you know, I mean, it's, no matter how you put those eight guys in, you're going to have a good match. So I think it's probably split up based on, um, you know, BCC guys together. And then the, um, the idea of, uh, just um I was gonna say you know wherever whatever where, wherever he wants to go next at least that's what it should be jay lethal or uh, daniel garcia best odds to take the pin in this match based well on- i think jay lethal is 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 seemingly in a, in a storyline leading to his departure from the jared group right um garcia is kind of you know, they gave did him, win his last match they gave they gave him the win um he had really good matches in the tournament. I think the tournament benefited him, even though um, he did lose four out of five. So, um, but yeah, I mean, as far as, um, you know, whoever loses the fall should be something which leads to that person being in a program with a new person. Yeah. And then in another eight man tag, uh, Jericho, Sammy, Sting, Darby against uh starks big bill powerhouse hobbs and Takeshita, who replaces fletcher why was, was there i i don't know i didn't hear anything i all- I, mean, I i i you know it was fletcher and then all of a sudden it's Takeshita. you know um whatever but the um i mean i thought they should do a tag title match you know i don't see any reason why not but you do you know, think that they that that they would have wanted to change the belts just because Omega's out of the match. And maybe that's why they decided to do something else but to bring sting in as like the fan. I know, guess all I know, character. all all I know is stings last match in New York should have been promoted for like a month. He should have been on the show. They should have been, they should have built the show. Like I, you know, it's the same thing when I was, when I was in the crowd in uh, the Oakland show and it was, I'm just sitting there going like, why the hell did they not promote the hell out of the idea? This stings last match ever in Northern California. You know, it's just like, it's, it's, I, I, it, it just, I don't get it. It's, it's really missing. It's missing a layup. You know what I mean? And, and when that happened and you and I were talking about it after immediately, it's kind of like, okay, from here on every city, mm-hmm. right. You should be promoted and promoted in one city yet, you know, other than Greensboro, Greensboro's doing great, you know, but it should, but Sting's last match in New York should be a big part of the promotion of this show. It ends up being announced on Wednesday before the show, and they don't even they they did mention in passing, you know, it's, it's the last match, but it's like it should be so much bigger, um, you know, just the appearance. There should be a little bit of a a little bit of a thing, you know. You don't want the big ceremonies, Greensboro. You should do a little. It's you know, it's New York. You should do something. Uh, yeah, no, I, I I agree with you, but uh, also um, two eight man tags on, on the same show, <laughs> like. Well, oh, that's uh, that's so that's and a battle royal, yeah. Battle royal. Well, it's on the pre show, just get guys on the card. And that we at least we know there's a purpose for the battle royal. You know, the winner will be TNT either title shot, yeah, shot at uh Adam Copeland or Christian, one or the other, you know. So, um, 
and and there's a lot of good talent out there. I'm, I'm you know, I had that whole list of talent that's not on the show. It's a pretty big list. Um, so hopefully most of those guys, you know, your Adam Pages and everything will be in it. And and if that's the case, you know, get a, you want those guys on the pre-show though. Uh, I want I want the top guys challenging for the TNT title. But if that I, way, I just feel like if those guys were in the match, it wouldn't be in the zero hour. It'd be in they'd push something else to zero. Hour. Yeah. But you have a pay-per-view and you don't have like Pentagon and Adam Page and people like that. Well, we'll see. Uh, oh, by the way, you wrote about Goldberg had made some comments about Sting. You know, he was the reason Sting's the reason that he was, uh, I guess, got into wrestling or whatever he said. Uh, is Goldberg uh, like, would he even be allowed to to join the festivities in any way? There's no reason not to. He's a free agent and. um you know him and Tony. Are, you know him and Tony talk. I don't know. You know, I'm. I presume that the reason we haven't seen Goldberg is just you know Bill asking for a lot, a lot of money, and Tony not willing to pull the trigger on that kind of money. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but you know it's been brought up at press calls. Yes, he talks to Goldberg. I thought Goldberg was going to be in just by the way everything was talking. So, uh, but it's never happened. So when it doesn't happen because of that, I always feel it's probably a, some, a money situation. You know, Bill has always been known for asking for um, a lot of money to uh, leave the couch. You know, he's always been like that, and more power to him if he can get yeah. it. You know, he, I don't. He knows don't, what he's what he's worth, or at least what he believes he's. He worth. has a belief of what he's worth, and and it's a lot of money. I know that. And then uh, Swerve and Keith Lee finally coming back to this. Do you sense that this was? A, a long time idea or just something that they figured that they could get back to at any point and this was just the time yeah i think i think that it's probably been planned for a couple weeks at least if you you know look back but it was something that they dropped i don't know it's weird i mean it's like it was it was an angle from over a year ago yeah now we're doing the match um it's fine you know um you know i figure a big win for swerve you know that's how, how i figure it which probably should be at this this at this stage and then andrade and miro which doesn't sound like an easy match to book or to figure yeah. out who's winning or losing yeah i would have i would have andrade win he's the hotter of the two i don't know that that's going to happen um andrade did great in the tournament um miro whatever you know i mean miro never wrestles speaking of getting off of the couch yeah so um but, you know, at the same time, I mean, who's who's under contract long run? I don't know the answer. You know, Andrade might be leaving. Um, I mean, it's certainly been talked about for months that when the deal's up, he could go back. And um, if he's, you know, if he's thinking of leaving, then, you yeah, know, then he should lose, you know. Um, so, yeah, Andrade's got the big match with Volador tonight. They're going to, that's going to be, it's, I heard, I, the advance is really, really strong, I heard. Uh, you know, like, there'll be way over 10,000 tonight. Um, in that match, um, first time those guys have done a singles match, I think in 10 years. Um, so, um, that's you know. pretty cool. Yeah. 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 It's been a, it's been a cool run. He, uh, got a lot, a lot of attention going back there. They, they, um, big crowds this week. I think that they did, um, you know, like the, uh, the Monday and Tuesday, they, they ran Friday, Monday and Tuesday last week at arena Mexico. And I think it was like, you know, three shows all over 7,000 in the same building in a, um, you know, whatever it is, a couple day period. And, and, you know, very impressive business with Andrade and um, Andrade didn't work the Monday show. Andrade worked the Monday show in Puebla and um, sold that one out too. So um, CML had a big, man, it's holiday week. Historically, it should be a big week. And it was. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? Wrestlingobserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers 
at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.